Hello, my name is Kai and I will guide you in today's lesson. In this lesson, we will explore the activities for the first non-group actuator integration activities for the servo motor. The servo motor is a DC motor that could be programmed to an accurate angular or linear position. In this activity, we will be using a specific servo motor that could be programmed to move from 0 to 180 degrees. For the first project, we're going to connect the rotary potentiometer to A0. And then connect the brown pin of the servo to ground. Connect the red pin to 5 volts. Connect the orange pin to pin 6. Once it's all connected, Attach the shield to your Arduino Uno and connect it to your computer. For this first variation, we're going to have to include the servo library that comes with the Arduino IDE. Just type in number sign include servo.h. Next, type in servo servo and define the potentiometer pin to A0. and the servo pin to pin 6. Next, make a variable for the potentiometer value in the integer format. Then on the setup function, we turn on the servo by typing in servo.attach and the servo pin. Then on the loop function, we're going to read the potentiometer values by using the function analog read. Then in order for the servo to use this analog value, we need to use the map function. Then in order for the servo to use, we use the code servo.write. Finally, we add a delay of 10 milliseconds just to give the servo time to move to its desired position. Once done, Click on Upload and it will automatically compile and upload to your board. You can start rotating your potentiometer and observe how this affects the servo. For this next variation, Connect the buzzer to D5. We need to define the buzzer pin to 5. Then on the setup function, we need to set the buzzer as an output. In the loop function, I'm going to add an if-else statement that will turn on the buzzer if the potentiometer value is less than or equal to 180 and if the potentiometer value is greater than or equal to 178. Inside this if statement, we add a tone function to turn on the buzzer. In the else statement, we use the no tone function in order to turn off the buzzer. Once done, Click on Upload and it will automatically compile and upload to your board. Once you're done uploading the code, you can try rotating the potentiometer and observing what it does to the buzzer when the servo turns 180 degrees. Connect the light sensor to A3. As observed from the previous activities, the server could be controlled by any analog input. And for this variation, we're going to be using the light sensor to control the servo instead of the potentiometer. Just like in the previous activities, we're going to use the servo library. 
Next is servo servo. And then we define the servo pin and the light pin as 6 and 8 3 respectively. Next, make a variable for the light sensor value in the integer format. Then on the setup function, turn on the servo by typing in servo.attach. Then on the loop function, we do the same thing we had done before, except this time we're going to be using the light sensor pin. Once done, click on Upload and it will automatically compile and upload to your board. Once you're done uploading the code, try gradually covering the light sensor and observe how it affects the movement of the servo. Hello, my name is Kai, and in this lesson, we will make a relay switch using a relay, button, and a sound sensor. First things first, prepare your Arduino sensor kit and connect it to your Arduino Uno. Then prepare your relay and plug the data or input pin to pin 9, your VCC pin to 5 volts, and your ground pin to ground on your Arduino sensor kit. Connect your relay to a light bulb or a wired extension wire. Be careful while you're connecting it and make sure it doesn't short. Connect the button pin to D4 and connect the sound sensor pin to A2. Open your Arduino IDE and proceed to create a new sketch. Now we have to define the relay on pin 9 and the button on pin 4. Add a variable to store button state and previous relay state. Next, go to the setup function and set the button pin as an input. and the relay pin as an output. Next, let's create an onButtonChange function. Read the state of the button pin and set it on the button state variable. Check if the button has been pressed, and if it is pressed, call on the relay change function. Now let's create an on relay change function. Next, type these codes to check what is the previous state of the relay. If the previous state is low, then make it high. And if it is high, make it low. Next, set the relay state.
and make a delay for 1 second to change the state of the relay. Go to the loop function and call the on button change function and set a delay of 50 milliseconds to run it again. Click upload and save it as button sound relay switch. Fix some syntax error and click upload again. And make sure the COM port and board are properly selected. Now you can test the button to see if it changes the state of the relay. Next, let's use the sound sensor as a switch. Create a function on sound change. Define the sound sensor pin to A2. Add a variable to store sound sensor value. Add a variable sound threshold value. Change this if your sensor is too sensitive. Go back to on sound change function. Add a for loop code to get multiple readings, and in this sample, we will have 32 readings. Shift the sum of the 32 readings to 5 bits in order to have an average value. Another method is to divide the value by 32. Print the sound value on the serial monitor for debugging purposes. Create an if statement to check if the sound value is more than the sound threshold. If it is more than the sound threshold, indicate a warning sign on the serial monitor and call on relay change function to change the state of the relay. Add the serial initialization on the setup function. Go to the main function and add the on sound change function. Once done, click on Upload and it will automatically compile and upload to your board. When it's done uploading, click Tools and click on Serial Monitor. To observe the sound sensor value, try clapping or make a loud sound to change the state of the relay. Change the sound threshold if you have issues on your reading. Now that is it for this lesson. To learn more about the other modules, simply head on to the next video.